Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing with Entrepreneur's Playbook. And today I have a very special guest. The most important skill in life is listening. It's drawing out another human being. It's peeling back the layers of the onion. Know someone else's greatest anxieties and fears and their greatest hopes and dreams. Champions are made and cash always follows. But where did it all start? These are the true stories of the blockbuster sports deals that went down in the locker room, boardroom, and between the lines that made many people very, very wealthy. This is The Playbook. I speak to kids or you know students or whatever. You know, I always tell them, I, I, I hate the word luck. I really oh, hate it. Me I too. despise it. Me too. That's it's a, a pet it's peeve of mine. It's insulting to me. A total pet when peeve. When somebody says, Ugh. oh, you're so lucky. Yeah. Now, luck had nothing to do with it, right? Exactly. And and you say, well, but that guy came in. That's not luck. The, the store that day and you were lucky to have that shirt. No, no, no. It Was was I lucky that I left my parents crying on the doorstep? That I cried myself to sleep every night under that pier and I was scared and I was homeless and I was hungry? Was it luck? Yeah. Give me a break. So, I, so but and I and that's what I always tell people: the difference between look. Here's the reality: everybody in this world, they have a dream. They have a great idea, and they have a dream. The 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 difference between the one percent or the you know the, the the people who see their dreams come true, the successful, are the ones who actually get off their butts and do something about it. That's the only difference. Everybody's got a million dollar idea, but it's the execution, it's that drive, and it's the determination. And one of the things that 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 I found out early is that when you you, if you have a goal, it's like, a, I always say, it, to me in my mind, I visualize it like it's a big mountain. It's this big treacherous mountain that I got to climb. And it's going to be torturous, and there's going to be times when I'm going to want to go back down the other way, and there's going to be pitfalls, and I'm going to slide back down along the way, but I'm going to keep going until I get to the top of that mountain, and nothing, nothing is going to get in my way. Well, once you've conquered that first thing, when, once you've got to the top of that mountain, that summit the first time, then you look around and you can see all these other mountains. But now that you've done it yourself, the first one, it's just a matter of what mountain do I want to pick next? Right. Because I know I can get to the top of any of those. Nothing will ever stop. And, and that, that philosophy is what I call plateau and go. Because a lot of people, and I did this once in my career as I was a multimillionaire and lost it all, mm -hmm. is you go up the mountain, surround yourself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas, you lose that imagination principles, that dream right. to be inspired, to be enthusiastic, in theos, connected to God, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I've been like you, right? I'm a think and grow rich guy. It's not enough just to dream. It's, That's right. You need discipline, strategy, awareness, hard work, determination, Passion. and persistence, right? And that's what makes it happen. But if you can be like you, Tommy, this plateau and go. I'm at this plateau, this mountain, but oh my gosh, there's a bigger mountain over there. Now that I'm up here, I can see it. Yep, and right. then you get to that one and all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, there's a whole nother mountain, a whole nother level of plateau and but go. But you have no fear of climbing any of them because you, you know, know you can beat them up. It's just a matter of choosing which one you want. It's imagination and action. And what a lot of people don't understand is you have to invest in yourself just like in any other business and you have to invest in your career and the, the way you go about doing that is you work on your game and you look to improve by adding different elements to your game so that you'll become more effective on behalf of your ball club. What though did you use to transition into all the different things that you're doing? Well the same habits that I utilize to allow myself to be a successful athlete are the same tools and skill sets that, that you need in life. And my foundation of everything that I've done and, and that will continue to do, I over-prepare to be prepared. Nice. That's, That's like my model. Bobby Knight's kind of like that. Over-prepare to be prepared. And when you do that, you'll always be prepared for any situation. Uh, my, my, my perspective is this. Don't ever believe you're better than you really think you are. And that's one of the common mistakes I, I see, not only in, in, in basketball, but in business. You think you're better than you really are. And if you start to allow yourself to believe that, then your performance and your work and what you deliverables, your deliverables are going to fail, ultimately, 
because you're believing that you're better than what you really are. I grew up in a different household just because my parents uh, came to this country from Nigeria. Right. Uh, so they didn't have the same enthusiasm about sports. And in, <laughs> in, in the Nigerian household, you ask any typical Nigerian, and they'll tell you, it's about getting your master's degree and your PhD, and it's all about That's what education. my mom wanted me to do. Yeah. She didn't want me to play football either. Yeah, it, it, it's all about education. Nice. They don't care about anything else. It's so like, you had a Jewish mom. <laughs> yeah, essentially, right? A lot mom, of guilt? A lot of guilt? Oh, a lot of guilt. Like, yeah, good. Why don't you go get your master's degree? Why don't you go get your PhD? This person's a doctor, a lawyer. Why don't you become a lawyer? That's great. Uh, I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to get my PhD. You know, it's like, what is this football thing you guys always go bounce bounce taco 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 what is all these you know they just didn't get it so that number one thing in your playbook that you think carried over off the field well I, I think relentless pursuit um relentless pursuit is one that i think identifies off the field on the field and then into your personal life and you know you think about pursuing a quarterback you're getting off the ball you have to fight like heck to get past that offensive lineman, unless he's not a good one. And even if you don't necessarily have the knowledge, if you have relentless pursuit behind you, you'll pursue the knowledge, you'll pursue the information. But you know, my grandma used to tell me, the more I study, the more I know. The more I know, the more I forget. So why study? But you brought up a great point. If you have that consistent persistence, that, that desire to learn more, to do more, like you do, relentless pursuit of your perfection, yeah. right? Your truth, then you can do anything. I've been hosting now for, for six years, American Ninja Warrior. It's a, a primetime summer show on NBC. It's a, a reality sports competition show. And what I love about it is that it does model life. There are all these obstacles that you constantly, right after you complete one, there's another one right in front of you. And there's just that little walkway between each obstacles. And that's just, that symbolizes the, the little breath of fresh air that you get after completing one. But right after you complete one, you gotta mount up. For I always say that if I would have learned to get out of my own way in baseball and in golf, I would have been exponentially such a better player. And you know, this idea of you, you were frustrated 24 year old, and that forced you, it ended up being one of the best things in your life to start searching for, hey, maybe I'm my worst enemy, right? We're not for in sure. blame, shame, and justification. You have old school coaches, they are what they are, but we all know no matter what you do in sports, if you can do it well, people will leave you alone, Yep. right? Mike Trout today, mm -hmm. you're gonna leave Mike Trout alone. Yep. You're gonna leave Tony Gwynn alone. Not when he first got called up. Not though. when he, right. Exactly. But, but people forget about that. And you're right. And, yeah. and they forget about, you know, even other great athletes when they first start. But tell me about the lesson there, that, that playbook of what that meant to you, you know, through meditation, through what you were learning, like how far in your own way is, because I think that's a major lesson for life and for business that most people don't understand. If, if they can understand you're your biggest enemy, how everything opens up and how simple it is. Without a doubt. I mean, for me, that was... You know, that was really a big key because I was doing well enough my first couple years until, you know, I, I struggled and got benched, but my numbers were good enough where if, had I not had this, this period, I would have just kept going with my same approach because it was good enough. And it was, I was going to, I would have had a 10 or 15 year career and probably made half or a third you, of the money that I ended up you've making. You've been what I call Eric Harris, right? Well, I mean. 30 home runs, 100 <laughs> RBI. Well, no, I was, been an all -star. I would have probably been, yeah, I mean, I would probably been 20 home runs because I, I, okay. I was just much more, you know, just fillet the ball over the shortstop's head and, and not try to do too much. And what happened, which I think is really You were a little Jew and he's a big Greek. <laughs> That's right. Skinny that right? Jew. Okay. Exactly. Skinny Jew. <laughs> but I, I think to have some adversity and same in business, to have some adversity that resets it and, and just says, you know what, I need to make some changes. I need to, there's a better way, as you're saying, to get out of your own way is to, to break everything apart and say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to rebuild for me. It was my swing and my approach and my, my focus and mentality with the meditation is I'm going to break everything apart and start over from scratch. And I had this month on the bench and that was the time I said, I could just sit here and pout or I could try to make changes. And, and that's what I did. And, and I think it was the best thing. It's the best thing that happened. I, don't, I think if I 
would have been in an organization where I would have been playing every day and had a great situation, I don't think I would have had as good a career as I did. People don't realize how hyper competitive they think, oh, the first woman. There's two different comp competitions going on. One is within the context of just getting a job as that position. Sure. Then there's the idea of being a woman and getting that position, which is a duplicit really difficult, exponentially hard thing to do that you have to go the extra mile. Can you tell me how that part translated and how you utilize that technique or your yeah. work ethic to, to get those types of jobs? Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I, I speak, I, I like to speak and I go around just like you and I, I try to talk to aspiring sports broadcasters with men and women or, you know, even just through social media when people reach out and really are interested in doing, you know, what I've done. And, and it's, it's that what I learned on this field that I, I that that being able to go the extra mile that you just talked about that's what I tell them I say look any job that I ever had my goal was to have every person in that room walk away and say I want to work with her again so what is that like what does that look like so that looks like being showing up early being willing to carry the tripod or carry the lights or out, you know everybody's tired let me go grab you guys a water like being willing to go that extra mile and and because that's when people take notice I, I don't stop upon my path you know, I, I question, but I verify kind of always. And so accessing information, whether it's in the form of reading content and applying it to your life and kind of having great reminders and understanding that all the answers that we all seek are actually inherently within us. Um, and obviously there's, you need a, a coach, a mentor, um, a friend to relay upon that information and, and bounce information off of. But um, I, I do believe that, you know, we have access now in our age to really achieve anything. So whether you've been schooled in the normal academia or not, uh, the, the truth of the matter is every single piece of information you wanna learn about any career path, any decision is accessible by your phone. I mean, there's yeah. no template, right? So uh -huh. myself, I am an avid information guy. Like I read all the time. I believe in full immersion. When I wasn't training, I was reading. I try to surround myself with the most elite businessmen as possible. And upon my retirement, um, you know, I traveled the world and I try to get in touch with all of the most successful people and the smartest, most intelligent people that I could possibly surround myself with right. and learn from them, engage with them, interact with them, emulate them as much as possible. So I, I've always been fascinated with business from before I even retired from sport. Uh, you know, I realized that sports would only take me so far in my life. But if you had you asked me when I was 18 what I want to do when I retired, I would have told you, what do you mean when I retired? I was built for this sport. Like, I have no other purpose on the planet. Right. I am I am speed skating, and speed skating is me. And I didn't really see anything else. But as I kind of grew older, I realized my, you know, my, my aspirations and things that I truly wanted inherently at my core. And you talk about higher vibration. I felt that this was simply a catalyst and a vehicle in which that was going to catapult me into something much bigger, much greater. And I was seven years old. I put a cape on my back just because of my academic success to that point and athletic success to that point. I'm seven, but I'm already good in sports. I'm already good in the classroom. And it started with one word, identity. Um, I realized I was not a gangster. I realized <laughs> I was not a drug dealer. I realized that life was not for me, wasn't even enticing, wasn't even tempting. You're a very giving person. You have been since you've been young. You yeah. know, you've given back to the community. Um, tell me about what you feel giving does. You know, I, I look at the great leaders in their playbook and from Zig Ziglar who said, the more that you do for other people, the more it's gonna come back to you. I believe that you are of service and you create a void for the universe to fill. That's how mm -hmm. people say, you know, more I give, I get 10 times back. Right. You know, there's a physics of the universe. I believe in that. And you're probably one of the few football players that understand physics and probably can relate. <laughs> to, what does giving mean to you and, and, and where do you give and, and how do you feel about it? Yeah, uh, well, just the, the opportunities that were given to me that I've earned, that I've been blessed to encounter, just makes me understand that path from where I was. And I was a fork in the road kid. Uh, say what you want about my early success. It's the fact that it could have went a different way. And I know that. And because it didn't, I show gratitude by my giving through that bridge uh, from that blessing of mercy and grace that I'm still here, that I'm on this right side, that I'm still going down my path of dreams and goals. You're someone that gives of others. How did that player will? Because you know you're special, but you, you don't want to project that on others. But I think you have a great ability of making others feel special 
and helping them achieve their goals in order to achieve your own. Can you talk to that a little bit? I I, I learned very early that um, the best, what I consider one of the great leadership traits that I've seen in people that I consider to be good leaders is that you uh, you don't need the mic, you don't need the pat on the back, and you don't need the spotlight. You give it to others, and they know that they got it from you, then you scored. And that's, right. and that's uh, to me, uh, a sign of leadership is to be able to discount, at least publicly, discount your own role. Give it to other people. Let them have it. it let them score. Let them uh, go home at night with a beam in their eye when they look in the mirror and to have their spouse or partner or best friend or whatever it is to look at them and say like wow you did well that because if if you're a real leader you don't need it you know you're the leader right stop it's not about you anymore let other people take credit i learned look i I think being self-aware is super super important for entrepreneurs for athletes all that um i want to make one point i i believe that particularly when you play at a professional level all professional athletes are entrepreneurs so in my football career, if I had a good year, I could make a couple hundred grand. If I had a great year, I could get a new contract and get a couple million bucks. And if I would have played out of my mind and the stars aligned, I could make never work again money. Right. But I also had two years where I made zero dollars. I got cut, I turned in my playbook, and I worked out for a bunch of teams, I moved back in with my parents, and I was working out, making zero dollars. So, those, two, those two famous words, radical humility. It's, you're an <laughs> entrepreneur. And so when I'm talking to high school, college, or NFL quarterbacks, it's the same thing I would say to a young entrepreneur. In my opinion, confidence is absolutely by far and away the most important trait in an athlete or in an entrepreneur. And confidence is not a God-given thing. It's not hereditary. Uh, It's not bestowed upon you. Uh, It's a muscle. And if I pick up something heavy with my right arm every day, all day long, and I eat good things, and I don't put bad things in my body, my right arm is going to get stronger. And I believe that confidence is the same way. So as a quarterback, if I believe that that's the number one most important trait, then why would I spend any time on anything else? Now, there's going to be some uh, ancillary benefits developed everywhere else on mechanics on this. But in reality, with a quarterback, if we're going to go out and throw today and we're going to work on something mechanical, it doesn't mean that when you start the season, you start up up seven because you worked so hard all in the offseason. It's still zero, zero. So really all we're training is the confidence in your ability to make that throw, to do that thing. So in entrepreneurship, I think it's uh, you have two races. It's a race to figure out what is the area, the field, the task, the trait, the role that you are most confident in. And then once you find that thing, then it's how fast can you go. What's that big mistake that you see that a lot of these entrepreneurs make? I think they probably fall too much in love in their product or fall too much in love in what it is that they're either trying to sell or or their business or whatever, and they don't want to listen to anybody else. They know all the answers for what is best for their business, what's not best for their business, as opposed to listening maybe to some other advice. And me as a quarterback, even though I'm the guy that's on the field and making all the decisions, I, I really tried to get input from everybody, whether it was offensive linemen, if, if I felt like – a defensive lineman was getting a, an advantage on a pass rush because maybe my snap count was the same. I want to ask them, do I need to change my snap count up right now to help you guys out? Or or if it's a wide receiver, there's a certain route that you think you can get open on, and how do you want to beat a guy? I'm always asking for input from my guys, and it's going to make me better and make them feel more uh, involved in, in what's going on in our success. And I think if other people did that in their businesses, uh, they would have a little bit more success by listening to other people, listening to the people that they hire, uh, give those people uh, that type of uh, confidence that, that you will listen to some of their suggestions. That doesn't mean you're going to do everything that they say or, or everything that they suggest, but at least they know from time to time you are and they feel like they have an input into what the success is.